What is up everyone, it is Andrew Peer here of Beta AT Production and Publishing bringing you guys a new YouTube video. In this YouTube video I'm going to be talking about Reverb and FL Studio 12. Uh, currently I'm in a project that I've already done. As you can see, it's kind of it's kind of big. It's a decent project. It's kind of like a Toy Lane's Bryson Tiller type of beat-ish. Um, I'm, gonna go, I'm not going to really play it, but what we're going to talk about in this YouTube video is Reverb and uh, what reverb does and how you can use reverb in uh, FL Studio 12. So just to kind of give show you the beat that I have, uh, I'm gonna play just a little snippet of it and I'm gonna discuss the role that reverb plays on this beat as well as how you can utilize reverb in your beats and uh, understand the techniques of it. So it's gonna be a fairly easy introduction video nothing too complex and uh, nothing too basic so I'm gonna just play right here be, 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 So that was just a little snippet of it. So what I just pulled up is our snap. If we go into our mixer state and in here, <clears throat> we got a reverb. So if we listen to right here. You can kind of hear where that snap hits and it has that um, echoing sound. So I'm going to just solo it. I'm going to go right here. That's a snap. Now, of course, I got a EQ and then a little saturation knob. Um, saturation knob being from uh, Waves. But then uh, I got the uh, standard Fruity Reverb, which all you need to do to insert the Fruity Reverb is go to one of your slot channels on your mixer, go to over here, and then delay reverb, and it'll be reverb 2. So that's all you need to do to add it. Um, now if we come up here, there's a decent amount of options it gives you. So it has a high cut, a low cut, um, mid or side input. So what input will the reverb go on? Uh, the side, this, that's what the side sounds like. And here's what the mid sound like. So I like that. So I'm going to do the mid. High cut will uh, determine how much of the high end it gets cut. So, like that, or you go. You, you can kind of tell that the um, harmonics are a little bit uh, manipulated, especially in the upper, higher, and frequency range. You hear that? And then if we come down to. I like that a little bit more. And uh, the low end. I kind of like that actually. Might lower it a little bit. And then uh, you got the lesion. So, or um, like the pre delay. Not, the, not uh, the lesion, I don't know what I was talking about. But the pre delay. And then if you check this, then it'll actually snap over to like actual segment length, like so three seconds or no, I think it's like milliseconds and it'll tell you right up here. So if we go up here, 
like that so it has like a delay but I don't like any of that just maybe a little bit room tells you how big the room size will be so if we could do like this I don't like that I like a big room so we're gonna go to like a near uh, full maximum sized room diffusion changes the um, room type as you can see which affects how reverb is done so you see but I like to do this just a nice smooth room bass um, cuts the bass within the uh, reverb so if we do max it's not a huge difference and then this is decay time where how long the reverb goes on for that's a little bit longer now if we go up to here I don't I like it usually I like decay excuse me um, probably around this range I won't usually go past up here but I honestly could like I probably should try doing that on some uh, instruments and such it might get a different ambience style so and then a uh, crossover I don't really know what crossover does a whole lot. I kind of just leave it right over here. I think that might be a, a crossover with uh, some of the frequency ranges. I'm not too sure. Like the reverb might move over, but damp. That is just another. Um, yeah, all it does is um, affect the actual reverb sound a little bit. Um, now we got over here three faders for dry, uh, early reflection level, and wet level. So dry level, early ref reflection, and wet. Dry means how much of the uh, natural sound without the reverb. And then the wet means how much of the actual reverb sound. So if we were to cut down the dry, pull up the wet you hear more reverb rather than the actual snap now if we pull up dry pull down wet it's a lot lighter nah, I like it around and then ER kind of just affects uh, some other little settings it's not a major not a major component but, and then another, the final thing that's in the fruity reverb is uh, stereo separation. And this does uh, separation of the audio. So if we go down here, then it's gonna separate it, make it more stereo. Whereas over here, it's gonna create more mono. So if you have headphones, this is probably the best way of hearing and understanding it. Uh, also, if you have, Pretty good monitors you'll be able to detect it but headphones um, is a key thing because if I pull down all the way down here in mono it sounds very inner more like in the center but if I come out here as a wider sound uh, I'll very rarely will I put things in the mono I have a tendency of putting things in stereo it's just how I like things but if I'm trying to mix everything together, some elements might go into mono, so my 808 might be mono as opposed to this snap, which is gonna have a more stereo type of sound. And um, that's just like variations, examples. Um, so that's pretty much the main premise of reverb. Um, another tactic you can use <clears throat> for reverb is over here in FL Studio. We can pull down the wet level or uh, mix level of that reverb. So 30% or stuff like that. And that's just determining how much sound is actually going into the reverb right here. 
<clears throat> Alright, so I just want to see what everything. Alright, so I want to turn this on, turn this on, turn this on, turn this on. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Okay, turn this on. Alright, so I just turned on these percussions because they are all rooted in this, or uh, not rooted, but tracked to this re percussion reverb over here, which um, if we look over here, you can see the mix is coming down and going through here. So, all right, let's just go to where we got them right here. So there's no reverb on these percussions. If you look over here, they might have an EQ or just nothing at all. <clears throat> and even on this uh, symbol, it only has a delay. So all of these are rooted over to this percussion reverb, which is uh, acting as a auxiliary channel. And I say auxiliary channel because it is a channel that has an effect that is um, having other channels rooted to it and um, kind of stacking on top without affecting the spe specific instrument channel. So that might sound extremely confusing to some of you guys, but if I were to put the reverb on these percussions, I'm going to be using more CPU by putting in uh, reverb on each one of them and each one of these will be uh, having an altered um, I would have to copy literally the same exact reverb for these all to have like the same room sound if I just root them all to one reverb over here percussion reverb then they will all be sounding like they're coming out of the same room and so that's the reason that's one reason why I did it the other reason is I get to adjust the level of how much sound gets transmitted over here. So how much reverb I actually want to allow through. So I can tune this down. No reverb at all. Pull it up. I like that. And that's just one option. You can do a, put chorus effects, delays, all types of stuff over in here and create auxiliary channels. Or you could do it in here. I just like to do it in the um, 100 to 103 channels. But um, that's just one tactic, another tactic of uh, implementing reverb. <clears throat> so hopefully this video has been beneficial on teaching you some of the reverb uh, techniques and tactics and how you can use it. I think I went pretty in depth and broke apart each thing for you guys to understand reverb and how you can implement reverb in your projects. Um, I'm gonna play this beat one more time and you can kind of hear the reverb going on in the beat and the acoustics. Reverb definitely gives it that ambience and sense of room and even a level of almost realism. So that's kind of like how I like to use reverb. Reverb can also be a harmonic, um, a way of editing almost the harmonics or sound, not literally changing harmonics. It's like auto tune might, um, but more of, creating a different sense of atmosphere and sound so this is uh andrew appear here of beta at production publishing if you guys want to get drum kits and uh, tools on making beats like the pros or just getting uh the tools needed to make beats then please visit betaat.com we have a lot of options for you guys there whether it being music promotion services collab opportunities drum kits um, producer tag bundles much more so it's definitely worth the uh, time to go check out the website so thank you guys and I'll see you guys later